Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a fountain pen from Kaweco. It is this little guy. This is the Kaweco Lilliput uh, and this is the fire blue finish. Now Kaweco is a German company, have been around for, you know, since the mid 19th century. Uh, and they make a great range of fountain pens. And they're probably best known in the fountain pen world for their the Kaweco Sport, which is another pocket fountain pen. Uh, but this one, the Lilliput, is probably one of the smallest pens sort of on the standard market. It comes in a different range, a lot of sort of different finishes, uh, including uh, this one, which is the aluminium, uh, silver aluminium finish. Um, but this is the Fire Blue, which is a, a steel pen uh, with this very cool um, flamed finish. So you get the blues and the brown. So each pen is individually flamed, um, you know, with an actual flame. You know, the steel is hit with the flame, it, heat, it heats up and it changes colour. Uh, so each one is going to be unique and individual and they're all going to have their own little um, blemishes and all of that sort of stuff. That's just part of uh, the, you know, the um, the pen and, and the style of this flame blue. And a couple of other brands have uh, flamed uh finishes or fire blue as i should say in this case fire blue i have this uh i don't know the um diplomat aero has one and there's the i think um a couple of the other sort of uh the, there's a monte grappa and things like that um and it's a cool finish um but more about that in a little while let's talk about the pen let's talk about a little writing sample I'll talk about some pros and cons and all of that sort of stuff so the pen comes packaged, I think, in a really nice way. Uh, they come in this little tin, um, and it's just a, a very basic tin. It has some sort of like little padding on the inside. Um, Kaweco licensed to write Germany since 1883. Um, really handy little tins to then use for sort of other purposes um, if you decide not to keep using it for the pen. Let's go from the top, work our way down, and then we'll show you sort of the features of the pen. So on the very top, you see that it's a rounded uh, top, uh, and it's got the Kaweco uh, logo there. Uh, you get Kaweco Lilliput Germany there on the end of the cap. And then the cap is cylindrical down to a tiny step down to the barrel. Cylindrical out from there again. And these threads on the end and a conical finish. Now these threads are what makes this pen usable. Because as you can see, like, that is a small pen. Like, you'll see it in a size comparison in just a little bit, but it's absolutely tiny. It screws to uncap three and a half turns, so substantial, and then you screw the cap on the end of the pen, and you are left with a pen that is of a fairly usable size, very similar to a number of standard sort of ballpoint pens on the market. Um, the fact that the pen is small has one of the things that uh, makes this pen sort of, um, it's a, a slight con to the pen, and that is the fact that you cannot use a converter. You can get those tiny little squeeze converters, which I'll show you in a second, um, but it does take a standard international short cartridge. It can't be uh, eyedropped because it is all metal. The threads there onto the barrel are nice and smooth, as are the threads here towards the end of the grip, uh, and there's no real sort of step down. So it's comfortable, you can hold it slightly further back. You know, if, if it's big enough in your hand, you could hold it further back on there without too much of a worry. The section is quite narrow and small, but you are, you know, these are payoffs you get for having a pen at this size. We are talking about a pocket pen. This is a pen designed to travel in your pocket. It's rugged enough for that. It's made of metal. Um, carry it around, carry it with a, you know, sort of um, in a notebook pocket or those sorts of things. Really, really useful in that respect. Quick notes, you might be able to like tick a few things off a shopping list without posting it. Um, but, you know, my eight year old daughter can use this as, as a standard pen. Um, but the, you know, once it's posted, and it's not the, like, I'll get onto the posting in just a second as well. Um, you know, it's sort of a reasonable enough size that you could use this for slightly longer writing sessions. But for me, then how narrow that grip section is, that just means that for longer, like really long writing sessions, it just starts to get a little bit uncomfortable. I feel like I'm pinching down a little bit. Now about the posting of the pen. For me, the these sorts of pens that post by screwing the cap onto the end of the pen, they're like, I see the point in them and the merit and the worth. You do get a pen that is usable length, it's secure, it's not going anywhere. But it is also a slightly clumsy way of doing it uh, and stops the convenience of the pen being one of the key strengths. So. The fact that you have to three and a half turns to unscrew it, uncap it, 
another bunch of turns to post it. It's not a quick draw pen. Uh, if you're after a quick draw pen, um, you know, something like the Pilot Vanishing Point with the retractable pen is probably going to be better suited to you than a, a tiny pocket pen uh, like this. Um, but yeah, it's it's a perfectly fine pen. They come with a steel nib. Um, it's a small nib, but it is steel and it writes fairly pleasantly. Um, you can see there it's got the Kaweco logo on it and says M for medium. They come in uh, uh, extra fine, fine and medium uh, on the Lilliput uh, from most retailers. You can get this size nib on other models of pen, such as the Sport and things like that, uh, and they can go through to like double broad and things like that. So if you're interested in a, in a you know, a bit more punch in that respect, look at what your options are from your local retailers. Um, so as I said, there are different finishes. Here is the uh, aluminium. There's also a really nice copper version, which I like quite a lot, uh, which would patina beautifully. And it's the patina and wear on these pens, particularly the flame blue here, a fire blue, which uh, is going to be an issue because there are reports that this finish does like come off, like it wears off over time. Um, and so you just be left with the steel pen, um, slightly discolored. But it's also not a, you know, a, it depends on what you buy. If you're buying it for this sort of, you know, finish, it might not be the sort of pen for you in the long term. Um, something like the copper with the patina would be really nice. Let's do a couple of uh, size comparisons. Let's uh, talk about and then do a writing sample and the measurements and all those sorts of things. Here we have a Lamy, oh, screw that in properly, <laughs> Lamy Safari just for size comparison. Um, you can see it is a small pen. It's a pocket pen. It's not designed to be a full size pen in that context. Here we have an uncapped Lamy Safari. And then if we post, uh, unposted, sorry, if we post the Kaweco, what you see is that you actually get a pen that is not hugely dissimilar in length. Yes, it's a little bit shorter, it's certainly narrower, and the section is a lot smaller, but it puts it into a fairly reasonably length pen for sort of, you know, everyday writing, um, which is quite handy. So, if we now just talk quickly about the uh, measurements of the Lilliput, as a tiny pen designed to be pocket pen, very small. Um, it is 87 millimeters when it is uncapped, 97 when it's capped. So little. At 87, this is not how it's designed to be used, however. It is designed to be used posted, and that comes in at 124 millimeters, which becomes, as I said, a pretty usable length, really. Um, the grip section is 7.6 millimeters. Now, for someone like myself, who's sort of key grip range is in the 10 to 11 millimeter mark. This is feel, this does feel very small. The weight of the pen is 23 grams for this particular version. It is heavier than the uh, aluminium version, of course. Um, 15 grams of the pen is in the barrel and eight is in the cap. Now I did mention um, the uh, converter issue. So in my uh, aluminium one here, I have one of these squeeze converters. So you can get that Kaweco um, squeeze converter for, which will go in the little put. It's just a little latex squeeze ink pen uh, converter, but you get such a little ink capacity that for me, I think the ideal way of using um, the little put is using the standard short international cartridge. Now, in this case, I just have a plain Kaweco blue cartridge in there, um, but, and that, that serves its purpose. You can refill these cartridges using a syringe, all these sorts of things. Lots of brands have cartridges. Um, I tend to reuse my cartridges in the same pen uh, until the uh, little, um, you know, the opening there sort of wears out and splits. Um, it's, you know, you're just not throwing away heaps of plastic that way. Uh, but yeah, I think the short cartridge is the best way of using these pens. And having a handy pen like this, you know, there ready to go is actually a pretty sort of handy thing to have. Just while I mention here, this pen doesn't have a clip, obviously, but you can get a clip for it, uh, which are sold separately. Um, but if this is the sort of the sleek minimalist design that you're after, the clip does get in the way, I think, in terms of the look. Let's do a writing sample, and then uh, we'll see how we go. So here is Clefontaine 90 gram paper. 
and this is the Kaveco Lilliput and this is the fire blue finish um, it rides nicely it's got a steel medium nib and the ink here as I said is Kaveco blue cartridge which is actually quite a nice that was uh, not a skip that was me just not aligning the pen on the page trying to write through a camera um, it's quite a nice blue like I don't you know as far as sort of these sort of standard blue cartridges go um, but what, what I do like is just how smooth this pen rides There isn't a ton of feedback. There's a little bit, but not heaps. Um, it, you know, writes really nice and smooth under its own weight. It's a nicely tuned pen. It's a, a stiff nib. You're not going to get line variation. Uh, it's not designed for that. Uh, reverse writing is possible. Uh, it's a little scratchy, quite scratchy and quite fine and a little bit dry perhaps. But, you know, perfectly, perfectly usable. Quick writing is sometimes where we get a little bit of an issue with this pen. Um, so, like, it's not doing it now, obviously, because I'm filming, <laughs> but occasionally I have noticed a very slight hard start uh, sometimes with this pen, particularly, I think it dries out quite quickly on the nib. It could also be a function of the ink. Uh, some of these blue inks do run a little bit on the drier side. But that is the writing sample. You can see it writes well. It's not the, you know, not the wettest pen, but also certainly, you know, not dry. It lays down a nice sort of consistent amount of ink. Uh, and really, it's, it's a joy to write with if you can get around the size of the pen. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of the Kaveco Lilliput. Start with the cons. It is small. This pen is not going to be for everybody. It's not going to fit everybody's hand. It's not going to fit every, everyone's design aesthetic. That's fine. Um, the issue with the size of this pen is how slim it is. It feels small in the hand and that section is quite small. There are reports of the finish wearing off. Like I've been using this pen for just over a week uh, and I haven't noticed any difference. Um, this was loaned to me by the way, not, uh, not part of my uh, collection. Uh, but I haven't noticed any difference, but apparently over time you can notice like the, the finish sort of wearing off uh, this pen. Um, the other issue is that there's no converter. Now, it's not that the converter isn't provided with the pen. That I have an issue with on other brands. With this, there's just no real decent converter that is appropriate for the pen. Um, like the ink capacity of those squeeze converters is so small, yet the the cartridge fits like what 0.9 of a mil so it's actually a fairly sort of okay amount of ink particularly for a pen of this size um so whether if you're wanting something you know with a converter this isn't going to be the pen for you this is a more expensive model of the pen the aluminium and a couple of other versions are cheaper this retails for around 170 dollars so you know it's a much more expensive version it's more expensive than the copper but each pen is individually flamed so you know, you are getting something that is a bit unique in that respect. But there are lots of pros to this pen. The size, because it's so portable, fits in your pocket, fits in just about any case. You could put this in your handbag, you could put this, you know, down the side of a journal with you know, a nice little loop or something. It fits anywhere. For you EDC guys, um, a lot of those pocket organizers, this is a great option because it's also rugged, whether you get this version or the copper version or whatever the case may be. It's reliable. I said there were a few hard starts. Yes, there are. But the nib does write well. It's a good nib. Uh, and when it's writing, it writes beautifully. Um, but yeah, the occasional sort of hard start has been noticed on occasions. Um, it's a sturdy pen. It's well built. It's rugged. It's one piece of metal per part. So like you are, you know, you're not going to have bits breaking off or anything like that. And also, straight up, it's just a cool finish. That flame blue finish is really, really nice. Um, I've thought about buying this pen myself many times, um, and I'm still very, very tempted. Okay, so this was the Kaveco Lilliput 
uh, fire blue. Hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me here on any of my videos or drop me an email, which is listed down below. Uh, if you've got products you think I should be looking at or a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, uh, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you later.